So here we are with my ongoing saga to prepare a KIM-1 board to operable status. Uh, at the end of the last video, I had just gotten it working um, with this uh, external circuitry over here. Uh, that was at the end of July in 2011, part of the Retro Challenge 2011 Summer Challenge. And it's now five months later. And I'd just like to go over a few things that are new about this uh, restoration effort. Uh, at the end of the Retro Challenge, I had it just working like this, where um, I've got uh, a working CPU, a missing RAM ROM IO timer, and one that's being replaced by all the circuitry. And uh, the memory was uh, inoperable, and I had just replaced the displays. And I still haven't done anything with the analog work here. But um, what's new since uh, the end of the 2011 Summer Challenge is that um, I have now replaced two of the RAM chips that were faulty. As you can see there's um, sockets under there so if I have to replace them again I just put in a new chip. But uh, these are 2102 static RAM parts. That means they are one bit by 1K addressable and so together I have 1K bytes of static RAM on the board. Uh, in the summer I was using a um, RAM part here. This is now taken out of the circuit. Uh, in the summer I had a um, Kim ROM monitor but I had uh, reassembled it for some changes in uh, addressing locations of I.O. and, and uh, the RAM in my RAM I.O. timer chip. This is a 6532, which is not quite like the 6530 here, but is close enough to replace, replace it. But um, in the summer, the, uh, I did not have my glue logic right, and the, the addresses were different, so I had um, to uh, adjust the ROM. But since then, I have uh, changed the addressing a little bit, and now I'm using stock firmware. This is the KIM-1 firmware as it was designed in the 70s, and it's now uh, running my uh, KIM-1 here. Um, also what's going on is over here is an area where I've been trying out some 6530 parts that I've purchased uh, from eBay. I have uh, two different varieties. One is a, a MOS 6530-013. I have no idea what it was used for back in the day, but um, and I also purchased a Rockwell 6530. Again, I don't know what it was used for. And uh, this the um, 6530 has some uh, configurable parts to it that are known when it's manufactured, and uh, things like it's this line a pull up. Um, is two lines are they I/O or are they chip selects, and also some other logic on the address lines. Is this going to be a part of the addressing of the, the uh, individual components inside the chip or not? So over here I've been um, experimenting with the 6530s I've purchased to see uh, what's in them. And it turns out that the MOS one is good enough to uh, be used as a replacement um, over here. So I um, want to uh, create a daughter board that will go there using a 6530 and a external EEPROM and some glue logic. So uh, skipping ahead, uh, in uh, December I uh, basically put this board together where uh, it's a 6530 for some other purpose, EEPROM again with the stock Kim ROM software some glue logic and uh, I'll uh, put it in place. So here we are with the 6530 replacement daughter board in place. Uh, the main um, expansion connector is disconnected now so all we're getting from the breadboard is, is the power and this is a decoder enable which is actually grounded indicating we use the onboard decoder for the Kim one. So I'll go over here and we'll give it power and reset. 
And we have an operating Kim one. We can put an address and look at the uh, contents of this thing. Uh, change values. Go back to address. And um, you know everything is, is pretty much working as you would expect it. So uh, now we're ready to get started with the retro challenge for 2012 winter warm-up.